Feelings Friday, it's Feelings Friday. It's the best day ever in the world. It's so great, it's the best. Feelings Friday. Just made that song up. Genius. Um, you guys, that was the coolest thing ever. I had so much fun reading your writing and exploring these places with you and you were so vulnerable and brave and cool and good writers and this is gonna this was like not that I thought it was gonna be bad but like you guys are pumped like I got over 200 submissions and that just feels cool and I read them all because because poetry um so okay there's a bajillion things I want to tell you on top of like we have to do the next prompt but um okay was the first thing. Oh, Pinky's okay. Taped it. I've been, uh, I'm in LA right now. I was working, um, I was, I've been writing a little bit here and I'm kind of going through a weird thing. Like I had kind of a bad day because I'm just like in my head when I'm writing, which is like what I <laughs> urge people not to do is find the critic in their head where they're like, is this good? This is bad. This is a stupid line. Like I can't get that person to shut up because the person in my head when I'm writing, Music is like, is it a hit? Are they going to play it on the radio? Are they going to, you know, is the label going to like it? And I, you can't, like, you can't write that way. You have to write of your own voice and what feels good. And I don't know, so I'm working on finding that voice again because I am, like, kind of lost right now. So reading these was actually brought me back to a place that I loved and felt good about. And I'm just very grateful for you as a community, not just as, like, you know, fans. Um, and the other thing that was really neat about it was that, how do I put this? Um, like, as, I guess, a public figure, you get familiar with certain fans or, like, their profile picture or their name or something because you see them come up, not the, not the ones that are, like, spammy or scary, but the ones that say really nice things or are supportive or are funny or have good puns or um, run the fan blogs. Like, like there's a, you, you know, you know about them. My girlfriend has a good um, phrase. She calls them friends, friend fans, and I think that's cool. That's how I feel. So I recognize some of the names or the profile pictures of of uh, some of you guys and I didn't realize how touching it would be to um, read read your work and be sort of a part of your life and um, I guess a goal that I've always had is like the desire to connect like I have this insatiable hunger to connect with people and when you're in this like celebrity culture grossness like it just becomes like a conversation with you becomes bragging rights so how can you really have an honest authentic connection and like without being collected like like a commodity like people aren't just consuming you know music or art anymore it also has to do with personhood and I just want to like like see people on a really honest level and this has been amazing because I feel like I'm able to see you guys and that makes me really happy and I love you and you guys are all awesome like I just like I thought you would be bomb um okay so a couple things um these are prompts so that means that, that we're trying to write new poems I mean I love hearing your poem, you know, a year ago about your breakup, and I'm glad that you're getting that out, but it's not part of the prompt. The prompt is supposed to spawn new writing and, uh, you know, push limits and explore a place that you weren't um, expecting to or don't usually go to, and that's sort of what this is a guide for. Um, so just letting you know. And also, I love your fan letters. But um, I have um, an address for fan mail if you want to send it there because I really want this to be about poetry and not about celebrity or, or you know, things that I've accomplished. I don't, I want it to be about poetry, community, and prompt and things like that. Okay, so also I picked out a couple of my favorite lines and wanted to give some shout-outs to some really cool 
things that I found and then read you one full poem that I really, really liked. Um, okay, the first one uh, I read is by Amanda Hawk, and she had this cool thing. She juxtaposed her name with um, her body, like her relationship to her body. At, like she even talked about the way that she wrote her name, like handwriting, which I thought was a really cool take on your name because we all evolve in some way with our handwriting. So cool. Amanda, that was cool. Um, and then Salah Juntinen uh, dissected their own name with feelings of each syllable. Sounds have connotations. That's so cool. Syllables. Sounds. Awesome. Um, Donnie Winter, um, his poem was sort of about seeing his name published as a writer. It had, it, there were a couple things going on in that poem, but, um, that was one of them. And I thought it was cool because names are tied to recognition. Like when, when you win an award or something, they say your name. They don't say, you know, your moon child star spirit name the name you want to be called, they call your real name. So it's sort of that relationship to the, I guess, the oral sense. Um, Troy Osaki, who's a phenomenal writer, uh, put this poem in, and it just, ugh, it was amazing. Um, so this is an excerpt from it. I wanted to read it to you guys. America has taught me to be less foreign, an unmarked atlas of where I am from. A Japanese accent pronounced like a small war in my mouth conquered in English. Shut up. Oh my god. A small war in my mouth? Get out. But don't keep writing. I don't want to read everything you write, Troy Osaki. Beautiful. Um, Annabelle Zalewski. Um, oh, hers was a journey she had from her name. So from first as a little girl and her relationship with it as she got older and then hearing her partner say it. And I thought it was neat because names grow with us um, the same way our handwriting does. So as we evolve, our names evolve and our relationships to our names evolve. So amazing job, you guys. I loved it and um, I hope you guys had fun too. So on to this week's prompt. This week's prompt. It's the coolest prompt. Okay. Um... Since, like, six years ago, I've been a massive fan of a writer named Shira Ehrlichman, and her command of language and the things that she thinks of are just so out of the box. Like, sometimes I feel like when I'm writing, I'm like, is there, is there any more original ideas? Has there ever been an original thought? And Shira, to me, like, finds original thoughts and original ways to put words and command of language, and I'm just baffled by what she creates. So this is a poem by Shira Ehrlichman. One. A man who forgets himself is poor at making bread. That is a cookie fortune I never got. Three virgins in the sack are like three happy vowels. Ew. That is also a cookie fortune I never got. The mountains have really big hands. Once more, folks, a cookie fortune I never got. Don't turn around, there are babies being made. That is, again, a cookie fortune I never got. Two. The bubble bath was filled with lemons when I kissed her. A secret, just nobody's secret. The extra pillow is to hump. Somebody's secret, someone close by, maybe right here. I lick every scented marker in the set. Gregory long legs, not so secret in fourth grade. Every bad thing that ever happens to you is either a thermometer or a barometer. A secret I wish someone had told me sooner. I am not brave, the heart secret. I am too brave, the heart secret. Three. A dishwasher that plays the dishes as notes. Uninvented invention number 23. A holiday diary where everyone shares entries in a highly ritualized public format. Uninvented invention number 68. Burn the water. 
a blue song revealing the impossibility of abandoning those that abandon us. Uninvented invention number 104. A miniature movie theater suspended above the forehead during sleep to, of course, project movies to a loved one. Uninvented invention number 19. Walking campfire, built small and safe enough to store in the breast pocket and familiar to all so all may sing along. Uninvented invention number 859, onion vision, so we may see sadness as it is, artichokes as they are, sound, muscle, the truth as it is. Uninvented invention number 44. Word kites. You tie them to what you say, and they go wherever they want to go, like a tree tangle or your mouth, some hot moon like that. Uninvented invention number 960. That poem is so cool. I love that poem. So that's by Shira Ehrlichman. So this is my challenge to you, uh, based on the latter part of the poem, what is your uninvented invention? Um, I want you to avoid the literal invention, although you can pursue that in, in however you want, but, um, you know, because like one time my friend Heather, who's also my drummer, we came up with something when we were smoking weed called Shoe Party, and I can't tell you what it is or else you're going to take it and you're going to go on Shark Tank and Lori Grenier is going to pick it up and then they're going to play it on QVC and you're going to be a bajillionaire. And I'm sorry, I want, I want to be a bajillionaire first. Anyway, so avoid the literal interpretation of invention. Um, instead, everyone knows that the best inventions solve things or make things easier. So I'm asking you to make a metaphysical invention for a metaphysical problem. So if you're having a problem, if you're going through grief, if you know someone else is going through something, if you want to serve, solve the world's issues, like go global, like solve world hunger, please. Somebody needs to. Um, so what could solve world issues? Uh, I want you to go magic go surreal go out of the box um and i think the best way that i found for writing especially a prompt is that i let it sit with me for a day and i spend my whole day observing so i think this is a good observation poem because you can sort of spend your whole day going like oh wouldn't that be cool if i had like kaleidoscope eyes that would be a cool way to see things. I don't know. So come up with that sort of invention and then let that live and explore that however long you want to. Um, and turn those critics off. They're mean. They're mean people. Shut them up. They have no business being in your brain. You have business being in your brain because you're a smart, genius, brilliant person. And I love you. Um, make sure you name the invention. That's like half the fun. Anyway, I love you guys. This has been so much fun, and I hope you're as excited as I am because I love this, and I love you, and you're special, and have fun writing. Okay, guys. Feelings Friday. Da-da-da-da-da. Feelings Friday. Poetry.